All right, here he is. DJ plays. Yeah, man. We're gonna answer this. All of it live. Well, live. Anyway, so I've got all of your questions. Well, I think almost all of them. From my video, I've taken everything and I've put it into a couple of folders here on my hard drive, and I'm going to answer them one by one. I've categorized them, like, you know, easy to, easiest to answer, hardest to answer, stuff like that. And I'm going to answer the easiest ones first, which are a couple of questions I've gotten regarding uh, my setup, my, my setup, my specs and all that. So I'm going to answer those first. And I've got like, I, it's, it's only about four questions actually. I've got questions from Absolute Media, Aiden Bradley, Fuck the NSA, and GFL Gaming, what are my specs? Uh, what do I use to record my gameplay? Okay, so I'll start from the specs first. I run this computer of mine is about three years old, I think, co coming up to four. I built it in uh, Christmas of 2012 or 2013. It's a Christmas present after I graduated from uh, school. Uh, school. So it has uh, N yeah, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 760 graphics card. I've got 16 gig of I think DDR2 or DDR3 RAM in it. And I've got an AMD FX 8350 8 core or 4 gigahertz processor on it. And as for the monitor, I'm running uh, just your usual Philips 24 inch HD monitor 1920 by 1080. And for Aiden, who a Aiden, you asked me what microphone I use, it's actually right here. Year. This is an Audio Technica ATR 2500 mic uh, HD microphone. It's a USB microphone. Uh, it's not. It's the quality for price. I think I got it about 200 ish bucks. I think that's. It's for for what it's worth. It's pretty good quality. Although you could get better. And as you can see, my recording environment. It's not a studio. It's my living room because I live with my family and stuff like that. So I mean, for what it's worth, it's pretty good. Oh, and what I use to record my gameplay. What I use to record is I use Bandicam. I paid for it for twenty. 27, 28 bucks, I think it's pretty good. It not only lets you capture webcam, it lets you overlay your webcam over onto your gameplay, although I don't use that. But it also lets you like really like almost in-depth customize like what sort of bitrate you want, frames, video type, what you want. It's pretty good. That's I think pretty much all of the questions I have on specs and equipment, so I can move on to the next section, which is Overwatch. Funnily enough, I've got four questions of people who asked me what, who've asked me stuff about Overwatch. I'll get into general gaming later. Uh, but these are like focused questions on Overwatch. So like people have asked me, uh, like Boots to the Max asked me who's my favorite hero in Overwatch. I've got Noah's Good asking me who's my least favorite. Uh, Punish Person 32 also asked me my favorite character to play in Overwatch. Watch and I've got Vanessa Richards who asked me what's my rank, who do I main? Uh, my favorites right now and are also who I main. So I main. I actually haven't touched Overwatch in I think like a couple months because I've been playing Rainbow Six Siege a lot. I have the most hours I think in Roadhog and Hanzo, and then following that it's Farah and then Zenyatta I think. Uh, I don't really play much of Overwatch anymore, and I never really got into the rank scene like um, previous season when I when I was still in Overwatch. Uh, previous season when I played I was I think a bronze silver I can't remember I didn't I didn't really care because I played it more for the fun factor and less for the competitive factor so balls that oh and my least favorite character Noah's good I hate May she is nothing but cancer I hope that answers that right so I do want to the gaming related questions I have a lot of them and I'm just gonna answer them in order so I've got well first of all I've got O2 Maxima VQ356 MT I hope I pronounced that correctly who asked me what do I think of the Soul Calibur franchise um Soul Calibur, I've never really played Soul Calibur. I and I like it though, for what it is, is that it was one of the first uh, fighting games, if I recall correctly, to actually have weapons as part of your character's moveset, along with, you know, regular hand-to-hand -hand fist combat like that. I never really played Soul Calibur, I watched people play it. It looks it looks pretty good, it's not something I get into, but for what it's worth, I, I can say, even though I've never played it, I like it for what it is, and it is a good fighting game. That is what I think of the Soul Calibur franchise. Uh, Brandon C asked me, what's the best game to grab on the Steam sale right now? Well, it depends on whether or not, on what games you like, whether or not you want to play like a racing game, or a fighting game, or a shooter, or whatever. Steam sale, right? Right now, I'd say if you want to play some, well, like one of the things that I just picked up for Christmas is um, Grim Dawn. It's this um, isometric 3D, uh, it's, it's not a role, like it's an RPG, it's like in like Diablo, but the art style is reminiscent of like Darkest Dungeon. Even though it's not made by the same company, I just got it for Christmas. I've played a little bit of it, but what for what it's worth, it is pretty good if you like uh, the kind of sort of grim, dark, humanity is not gonna survive this sort of RPG. Uh, other than that, other good games to get on Steam, so I would say Rainbow Six Siege if you like competitive um, first person shooters. Really, really competitive. Actually, what else, what else did I get on Steam? So, uh, uh, not 
much actually. Oh, I did, however, get um, uh, what's it called? Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic one and two for I think like four bucks. It's like super cheap. And if you really like the uh, what's it called? And if yeah, if you really like like the Star Wars, Star Wars the whole universe and stuff like that, it's really good. If you like Knights of the Old Republic, go pick it up. I hope it's still on sale. If not, then. I, um, I don't really have any other recommendations because I haven't been checking my wishlist at all. But uh, for what it's worth, I mean, if you can get like Nice City Old Republic, uh, try get Grim Dawn maybe. If you like good roguelikes, get Darkest Dungeon, Nuclear Throne. Uh, if you want, um, what's that? What's that one game? I, what's that one game I play? Crap. Uh, where where is it? Oh yeah, uh, other roguelikes. Um, there's got I've got Halcyon Six Starbase Six Starbase Commander. That's a that's a pretty good. Um, it's not a space sim, but it's like a roguelike. But it's roguelike set in space. It's like if you took FTL and then you like combined it with an RT. If you combined it with like Darkest Dungeon and you like mushed it in together, that's what that's what that's what Halcyon Six Starbase Commander is. Uh, you've and then I've also got the Final Station, which is a really good horror game. It really is. Even though the the art style is not something you'd expect a horror game to be in, but it is a pretty good horror game. Uh, other than that, just you know what you fancy. Those are my recommendations anyway. So just don't don't fully base yourself on those. Right, uh, Deja Who has asked me what game you have the most nostalgia for. The most the game I have the most nostalgia for is the stuff I used to play on the Sega Dreamcast. It was that old, big, white, blocky console. Remember? Remember in the good old days of like the early 2000s, or the late 1990s? Uh, the Sega Dreamcast was like, I think like, the early, came out in the early 1990s and lasted for about good 10 years before it got overtaken by the PlayStation 1. Uh, I had... I had a lot of good games on the Dreamcast. I had the original Sonic Adventure, I had uh, Army Men Sarge's Heroes, if anyone remembers that. Uh, Jet Set Radio Future as well, that was a good one. Uh... Those those are the those are the consoles I actually had a lot of nostalgia for. Uh, past the Dreamcast, I would say one of the other game I had, I had the, I had the most nostalgia for is would be all the the ones from like the PS One PS Two era, the ones that I really want to go back and play, as well as older games from like the PC era that I've read much about but I've never gotten to play. I just realized I've ranted all about all these games that I have nostalgia for. But I haven't pinned it down on one game. Um, I'd say SXX Tricky PlayStation 2. That was like the first game ever that like I accumulated the most hours in on my PlayStation 2. It's so fun. I wish I could play. I wish there was like a remastered version that came out or something. I don't know, man. EA get on that. Thank you. But SSX Tricky, and then after that, SSX3 for the PlayStation 2. That was my favorite. Is coincidentally SSX3 is where my name came from. I got it from the radio DJ and. I shortened it so that it doesn't include the atomic a bit and hey, just DJ. Question, Grumpy Old Dreamer has asked, have you ever thought about playing Warheim City of the Dam? Nice and cheap on Steam right now. Yes, I have actually. Um, Warhammer is one of those franchises, well, 40k, but Warhammer, the medieval side, just a little bit. It's kind of grown on me over the past few years, especially since I've been playing a lot of the Dawn of War games. I know it's not like technically not the same universe as the medieval Warhammer, but I consider it both to be under the same company, which is Games Workshop. And Warhammer to me is one of the best um, universe Versus that I have known and I love it to death. I do have Vermintide, which is like set in the same region, I think. And yeah, I, I I love it. I would get it, I think, if I had the money or the time to play it because I'm playing other games right now. But uh, yeah, I will try it. I will definitely get to try it. Thank you. Uh, John Jane asks, what was the first game you fell in love with? SSX Tricky. See, <laughs> see the previous response. Thank you. Uh, Kevin Hackner asks, what was your most memorable moment in gaming? Actually, I think of other people have asked me that question as well. Uh, Kevin Hackner. I've got. Ah, uh, yes, Wizocracy is also asked me that uh memorable moments in gaming for me would be things okay so like the first moment i honestly remember was when i was like 11 i played half-life 1 and then i got to the part where like the the aliens started invading the facility it was like past the um uh, the the crystal breach whatever the fuck you call it with and then i got to the part where the scientists got pulled into the vents and then i saw that moment i stopped and i had nightmares for about a couple of days and i didn't play that game again <laughs> yeah yeah that's that that's literally it memorable, that, that's one of my most memorable moments in gaming uh the other memorable moment i would have is me playing Red Alert 2 with my friends back in grade school. Um, here it's called secondary school because I live in Singapore, which answers another question I will answer later. Uh, we are not Amer uh, we follow the British way of schooling, I think. So we don't call it grade school here, we call it secondary school. But I had a couple of friends who used to play the old Command & Conquer games like Red Alert, Red Alert 2. And my 
the funnest times I had in my childhood were playing was playing Red Alert 2 and Command and Conquer Generals with them. So yeah, that's my memorable moments in gaming. Now, next question: What game are you most looking forward to playing in 2017? Uh, that would be Death Stranding. If you've never seen the trailer for Death Stranding, there are two of them. Go look. They're amazing. It's amazing to think that Guillermo del Toro, Hideo Kojima, and Norman Reedus are. Co are collaborating together on one game project. And to think that for some damn reason, Konami decided, yeah, you know what? You're gonna take Silent Hills, you're just gonna throw it in the trash bin and we're gonna fire Kojima. And then Kojima's just gonna leave. And then I don't know what sort of, what mindset they were in when they made that decision, but okay. Kojima's gone on to do his own thing. And frankly, it's better than anything Konami could have ever dreamed of. So I'm happy. Uh, lol, olo. <laughs> lol. Uh, ask me Sega or Nintendo. Honestly, I'd, I'd say both. I, I have a 3DS and if I could ever, and if I could get my wish granted, I would want a Dreamcast so that I could play my old, um, I could play my old Dreamcast games again, like Jet Set, Radio Future, Army Men, the first Sonic Adventure, not the second one. So it's like, for me, it's like both. I mean, if you ask me, I have a 3DS, I've got a, P I've got a PSP as well, the old one, the, the, the fat, the slim one. I've And then I've got an Android phone and an old obsolete iPod Touch. So like, I honestly don't see what's the point in a lot of these uh, different like wars. Like, like, like if let's say Android's better or uh, Apple's better, or, uh, Sony's better, or uh, Nintendo's better, yeah, I don't care. Honestly, I look for things that I find useful and interesting. And if it's games, I find them fun. And if it's cool, yeah, you know, nice, I'll get them. I don't really see a lot of like biases towards one company or the other when both have their merits. That's how I see a lot of things in life. Uh, Mace Macerson asks, What's, what is your favorite ship in Fractured Space? Uh... <laughs> Um, um, it's that one ship. I can't remember. I can't remember what it's called. It's that. It's the um, the one ship that has like the shotgun thing. Hold on, let me look it up. It's um, it's a, it's a. What's it, what the what the fuck is it called? It's a it's a TDS it's a TDS ship. It's um the uh, it's that small little flighty thing that can that can shoot harpoons out at people and then hook them in and then you just you fill it you start to fill them in the face with like freaking shotguns and stuff like that. Uh, it's the where is it? I know it's a TDS ship. God damn. Is it the is it the, no? It's not the no. It's not the Reaper. Uh oh well, but there is another TDS ship I really like and that's the exec and that's the um the Executioner because I, I like it because it's really mobile especially with the especially with the Chrono Blink and like. Sometimes when I play with my friends, what I like to do is while they are busy engaging the enemy head on, I will slowly slink around the side, shoot them, shoot, pe shoot people in the back, and then just chrono blink away to rejoin my people. Uh, the execution is one of the ships that I really like. Oh no, it's not TDS, it's USR. That's what I was thinking. It's the it's the, all the, the big clunky white looking ships. They look like they're made out of freaking Apple in the future. Could you imagine like the the Fracture Space universe is dominated by only these three companies? Like that's weird. D -d doesn't don't people find that weird? Okay, ah yes, there it is. The U uh, the U S R brawler with the, with the thumper cannon and the harpoon and stuff like that. I love it. I love it to that it's my main ship. I love it. It's like the other class of people I would play in an FPS, which are the really mobile, high DPS, extremely squishy people. That that's my favorite ship. The brawler, the U S R brawler, and the T D S. Uh, what's it called? The Reaper. I can't remember. Whatever. Anyway, next, 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 next question. Next question. Uh, Mark Engelbuer Boyer, however the hell you pronounce this, asked me why no fighting games like Smash Bros or Pokémon. The answer is simple. I don't have a Wii. First of all. Uh, second of all, fighting games aren't something I am terribly good at. Like I've had a run. I've had several tries at Mortal Kombat 9 and Mortal Kombat 10. And even though I like the games, I wouldn't say I'm good with them because just fighting games are just aren't my thing. That's just not my, that's not how I roll. I prefer shooters, I prefer racing games, I prefer rhythm games. That's about it. Uh, Miguel Baca asked me what we say is my favorite game of all time. That would be without a doubt Okami for the PS2. Uh, recently got a, uh, like a couple years ago, got a remastered version for the Wii and then got a sequel for the 3DS called, uh, I, I, I Okami Den, that's right, that's right. Uh, Okami was one of those games that grabbed me and just sort of pulled me into the world and it's the PS2 game that I spent the most hours on. I completed it I think like three, four times just so that I could experience the story again and again and again and again. It's one of those games where if you ask me to play it again, I mean like if you ask me to like voluntarily forget memories of that game and play it again, I would still love it. It's really highly rated. I'm just so sad that Clover Studios folded like I think a year or two after they finished Okami. It's really sad but Eh, shit happens. Uh, Mope Rush asks, have your game changes, have, that, have your game preferences changed over the years? Uh, 
Yes, actually. I started off liking a lot of RCS games, Command & Conquer, Red Alert 2, Generals, StarCraft 1, uh, Warcraft, Warcraft 3, Frozen Throne, no Dota. I just preferred playing the campaign. And then as I got older, I started um, veering more into racing games and rhythm games. And then after that, my FPS thing just sort of uh, took over. And now I love FPS games. I love shooter games. I love um, racing games. I love rhythm games and um, RPGs, stuff like that come out close fourth. Uh, Quindercator, what's your earliest gaming memory? My earliest gaming memory was was that nightmare I had on, on Half-Life 1 that I talked about not a couple of minutes ago. So, thank you. Uh, Ryan Villanueva, favorite game to come out in 2016? Honestly, I don't... Um, if you ask me to get have a favorite for 2016, I don't... I, I mean, I would say Overwatch, but that's such a horribly overused game. And so I want to give the honor to something that's a bit less mainstream. And I'd say if I had to go through for less mainstream games that came out in 2016 that I really loved, it would be The Final Station for one. Uh, I think Battleborn came out in 2016. I th yes, it did come out. In yes, it did come out in May. Yes, Battleborn. It's um. Everyone's gonna say it's a clone of Overwatch, but honestly, if you've played enough of Overwatch and enough of Battleborn to know the difference, they are two completely different games. First of all, Overwatch doesn't market itself as a MOBA, does it? Battleborn does, it is a MOBA through and through, it's a first person MOBA. MOBA. It's similar to Paragon, if you've um, ever played that, Par uh, Paragon is developed by... Pa um, Battleborn is developed by 2K and Gearbox, which are the same people that made Borderlands, and then Paragon is made by Epic Games, the people that made Unreal Tournament. They're fundamentally similar, but of course in terms of style and substance and something like that, they're completely different. They're also completely different. But for what it's worth, I think Battleborn and The Final Station were my two favorite games that come out in 2016, purely because because those two games just captured me with how fun they are and how I love just love to play them. Uh, Shawnee Chap asks, how many hours you have played on your favorite game? I think there is someone else here that's also asked about hours. Where are you? Yep, there you are. Trevor LeBert asks, what game have you logged the most hours of your life on? Those two, uh, that, those, these two questions honestly have two different answers, but if you want me to be honest, I'd say it's Team Fortress 2. I have roughly 700 or so hours logged on TF2 because, um, I bought it in 2008 when it was still pay to play. It was like 60 bucks. I bought it from a store. It came in a little box and... I played that game to death. I mean, it was the 2008 was the time in Team Fortress 2 when the only character that had an update was the Pyro. And that to me was like, woof, my boy, oh my god, this guy has like more than one type of weapon than I can equip. And now look at Team Fortress 2, it's just filled with garbage. It's It, it sickens me to think that my favorite game for about three years now has evolved into a free-to-play hat-grabbing item, item moosing piece of crap. I mean, you might hate me for my opinion, but it's my opinion, and I've played that game extensively. I used to play it competitively too, and to see how much it's changed over the past few years is just... Uh. It's just disappointing, man. It's it's why I moved on to other games. I've stopped playing Team Fortress 2 entirely. I mean, if I play, I'll, I'd still find it, you know, to be one of the best, if not the best, class-based shooter of all time. Just my personal opinion of it. It's just gone down the drain over the last few years. It's... I don't know, man. Team Fortress 2 has tried to redeem itself and it so far failed. I'm sorry. Uh, Simon Coughlin Schmidt has uh, asks me which Final Fantasy was your favorite out of the series and why. My favorite Final Fantasy is Final Fantasy IX. It's the game I'm currently taking a hiatus on. I've actually I'm actually let's playing it for my channel right now. But I'm taking a break because I'm at the end game and all of my characters are not the level I am comfortable with to fight bosses for. So yeah, I'd say yeah, Final Fantasy IX is my favorite out of the entire series. A uh, close second would be FF Final Fantasy 4. If I hadn't played Final Fantasy 9 first and fallen in love with it, I would say Final Fantasy 4 would be my favorite because of, uh, I, w I wouldn't say like story. The story is pretty average, but I like the way Final Fantasy 4 um, the whole, like, the gameplay aspect, like, you shift Cecil from a Dark Knight, suddenly he becomes a paladin, and he gets, like, way more badass, and you get you have all these cool characters, all these, do these different things, and the story is just like, well, yeah. If Final Fantasy weren't, 9 weren't my top, it'd be Final Fantasy 4. Sink, uh, Sink asks, what's your favorite game released between 2005 and 2010? Uh, that for me would be Psychonauts, which was released in 2005, originally for the Xbox. I had the chance to play the remastered version on the PC after missing out on the chance to have played it in my childhood so sad but for what it's worth I played Psychonauts on Steam and uh, my mind was just blown man I as soon as when I heard inklings of news that there was gonna be a Psychonauts 2 from Double Fine I was so happy that they were gonna continue the same franchise that had that was like one of the best story driven games I had ever played 
that came out between um, in that particular year range. Thermsty asks, what is a game you're looking forward to that turned out to be total crap this year or? Uh, <laughs> because if it's this year, I'd say um, The Division because originally it, it was such a cool concept, you know, you take, you, okay, you're gonna take New York City and you're gonna plunge it into what basically amounts to a nuclear winter. But instead of nuclear winter, it's like disease-based. And for a while, the concept ca captured me. Like, I'm still a pretty big fan of The Division. I mean, I, I, I still find it a pretty fun game, but if you ask me to be objective about it, I'd say it's still total crap because Ubisoft advertised all of these amazing, this all of this amazing game, and then it just turned out to be a bug fest from day one. I couldn't start playing it like properly until like a week or so after release, when they had started patching it and stuff and even though i found it fun and i sunk countless hours into it objectively i still think it was a commercial failure rather than a success because of how badly the overall release was zewen asks what is your favorite indie game this year it's a toss-up between the final station and halcyon 6 uh, starbase commander i would say both but since you um it has to be one so here i'm gonna argue with myself about which one is better so okay final the final station it's it's an indie game it's about it's something like a like a like an, a zombie apocalypse except instead of zombies it's aliens uh these these weird things come from outer space it's been a couple of years after they landed and now like the main mode of transport in like um uh, for mankind is these huge trains. If you've watched the movie Snowpiercer, you might might understand like why this game might sound so appealing and if you like the movie Snowpiercer. Uh, so like the main way you get around the game is um, through trains. Like you are, you play this cute little, um, well not cute little, but like this um, train engineer that gets roped onto this huge ass journey. I haven't finished it sadly because um, other games have been taking up my time, but I've played about three to four hours in it and I can safely say the final station, it's worth the money and it's worth your play time. Like it's probably about seven, eight hours long. It's pretty good uh halcyon 6 starbase commander is uh like i said earlier it's the it's the the child of ftl and darkest dungeon if you had the chance so you play as this uh starbase commander who can con who can recruit officers for his fleet and he can send them out to different um planets to dis to um and do things there's lots of diplomacy involved with other aliens there's um there's like this exploration of this exploration of different planets and then you also have the base that you have that you also need to explore and clear and like open up different rooms so it's kind of like um the base building as the base or like the ship building aspect of like ftl uh and also the roguelike aspect of darkest dungeon because it's also pretty um it's pretty difficult like you will encounter situations where you will also lose crew or you will lose space battles and that to me is like the, like the whole roguelike thing i've played roguelike since uh i was introduced to the Mining of Isaac by a friend of mine uh, here locally. And I've loved roguelikes ever since. I played a lot of the Mining of Isaac. I played a lot of Darkest Dungeon, even though Darkest Dungeon is the bane of my existence. Uh, I, as for recommendations, honestly, I recommend both. Those are those two, I, I really can't decide between which. So it's like those two are my favorite indie games this year. That's it for the gaming questions, right? Time to go on to, to some of the to some of the channel related questions actually, because these are the questions that I consider the most serious and I'll end off on a lighter note later with like the, the really out there random questions that I haven't answered already in the comments. So I've got a lot of people here that ask me about like how do you typically spread your word about uh, Brendan K. Pearson that's I hope that's how you pronounce your name. How do you typically spread the word about your channel? It's Twitter. Twitter mostly and I also talk a lot on Discord. Discord. Uh, Discord I have I'm in this um, community called NewTubers and uh, we are basically it's a uh, it's a community for small YouTubers like myself to grow. Well, not well, not exactly to grow. It's not like sub for sub that sort of thing. No, no, that, no it's not that. Uh, YouTubers is a community that's all about building relationships between small YouTubers such as myself. Uh, our community consists mostly, it consists largely of YouTubers that whose subscri uh, subscriber counts are regularly lower than 500. We have some members who are about at a thousand ish or so holding there. But for the most part, we are all about we're all about the small YouTubers. We're all about discussions. We're all about uh, how to improve yourself, uh, we're all about showcasing our talent, or engaging different people. We've got musicians, we've got vloggers, people who do DIY construction, we've got people who do makeup, music, um, gaming like me, and it's like, we've just got this big, big spectrum of people in this one tiny little community. It started out, I think, about last year or the year before or the year before on Reddit, and the community back then was about three thousand or four thousand people most of whom were sub for who, who were using the subreddit for like sub for sub purposes or just blatantly advertising it and like, like like just blatantly advertising just like boom here's my video please subscribe to my channel i can comment if you see more and not using it as a place 
for us to grow our talent. And I found the subreddit after Googling like different YouTube communities such that all didn't pan out. I was like Google Plus, all that bullshit, no thanks. Uh, I found the subreddit, I think last year. And then I was roped on as a moderator. And after that, we just started growing exponentially. We just put all these, we put we put a lot of strict rules in place that prevented people, that are supposed to prevent people from spamming our place with like their videos to just to get clickbait views. And a lot, we've accomplished a lot in the span of like a year. Like the community has about tripled in size. I think last count was, I think tripled or quadrupled in size really. I think last count was like, I think somewhere in the lungs of like five digits. And after that, we, it also spawned a Discord server that has a whole bunch of people in it. I, I will link the subreddit and the Discord in the description below, of course, for anyone who wants to check out this community, wants to be a part of our community, you can join the Discord, you know, talk to us. I'm a moderator on both the subreddit and the Discord. Uh, and, you know, I'm me and the, uh, the rest of the mod team are really approachable. You want to come talk to us or just talk to the other members of the community. It's all fine. It'll be in the description below as well. Uh, I've got a lot of people who ask me as well what's the driving force behind your channel that's quite more gaming asking and i've got kryle krunen asking what's your main drive to get time out of the day to make videos liam arms what drew me to youtube in the first place uh oblivion asks how long i've been making videos uh davy chinchilla asked me how long did i take to get to 400 a lot of these questions uh honestly they pertain to my motivations for this channel and how long it's taken me to get here uh how many other questions yeah yeah um Samur samurai what keeps up your motivation trey b uh, i've had this you've had this channel for 10 years now, Take it. Uh, what motivates you? Videos very well done. What drives you to keep making good videos? Honestly, the motivation comes from um, personal experience. If you've, I, I mean, I don't know because most of my audience is American. So I come, my country, Singapore, we are notorious for being one of the, like the country in which the people smile the least. And we rank as one of the, I think one of the unhappiest countries in the world. I mean, don't believe any of, I don't, really believe any of the other surveys that say that Singapore is one of the happiest countries in the world. No, we actually rank, I think, one of the lowest in terms of global hap um, national happiness. And it shows, you know, a lot of the people on our streets, they don't smile, they don't laugh. I mean, when you're with friends, sure you do, but for the most part, we're all a bunch of frowny people. And I think to me, that was one of the main motivations for starting my channel, because what I wanted to do, being local and seeing all of these, all of this, you know, negativity in my country was I wanted to make people smile and I my my influences um, growing up and starting this channel were a lot of comedians uh, my idol is, is and always will be Robin Williams bless his soul because of his really fast-paced stand-up comedy and his incredible improvisational talent and he was one of the biggest influences on who I am today and I wanted to you know, as being a, uh, being a YouTuber, being on YouTube as a Singaporean YouTuber, I wanted to be the funny one. Because if you look at Singaporean YouTube channels, like you've got this channel called Wabanana, which is basically you is the very generic comedy based, horribly written top seven, top ten lists, which are frankly atrocious. They permeate YouTube. Some of them are good if they talk about topics like I don't know, movies, comics, what have you. But if it, it, it it's like it's badly written, I I have to say this even as a Singaporean, the talent base in our country is kind of small. Not um I'm not discounting any of the people in Wa Banana or any of the other really big local channels that have uh, a cult uh, that have a following because the people there okay they're talented at what they do and what they do is write comedy and if it works it works if it's stupid and it works it's not stupid but i just find that it's so terribly generic you know you don't have any local like com i mean we do have local comedians who are great uh there's this one fella i really like his, his name is kuma and he is like the best singaporean comedian hands down next to Dick Lee. and but like in terms of other content like gaming wise in Singapore and especially here in Southeast Asia it's all about the competition and I find it to be kind of boring <laughs> because all you have in like Singapore and like Malaysia, Philippines, South Korea, all parts of Southeast Asia you just get a lot of competitive shit and none uh, it's it's so serious it's kind of bland it's like stone it's like watching paint dry I, I mean if you've seen one one League of Legends cup or one CSGO cup you've seen them all and so I created this channel in the hopes that 
that I could be the first Singaporean YouTuber to be a Let's Player and at the same time a comedian. Comedian. I'm, I probably don't put out the funniest content on YouTube. I don't put out the best Let's Plays on YouTube, but I want to be the only Singaporean that does, that blends both of these worlds together as best as I can. That's, that's the main reason why I started this channel. And like along the lines of like Let's Play, my main influence is the Rad Brad, like the king of, the king of YouTube commentaries. He's not the best, but I admire him for what he does and what he does is really good let's play content like literally he doesn't play multiplayer on his channel if he can help it he plays solely single player solely campaign solely story mode he does let's plays he does them regularly he does them so professionally well done he's like my youtube idol in terms of quality content well for let's playing anyway and then i've got um, my editing idols who are vanos mr sark and Markiplier. I mean, Markiplier is not uh, probably not for editing, but like these two people, Vanos and Sar Mr. Sark, they are like the editing gods on YouTube. And I have been struggling for months to try and replicate what they do in Premiere Pro, and and it's 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 not easy doing things like this. It's not. And then I have and then Markiplier is like the main reason why I got back into YouTubing in 2014, I think. Because what happened was in 2013 or 2012, I put out a series of Dead Rising 2 videos. If you scroll way back into my channel history, you'll find a series of Dead Rising 2 videos, the Psychopath videos, back when Dead Rising 2 first came out. Um, and I decided to do a bunch of videos for the Psychopaths, which are the bosses. They did really well, but then I put them up on YouTube, not thinking that they get a lot of exposure, considering I was, at that time, I was a channel with maybe like 15 subscribers. And so I did that, I put them up on YouTube, and then I immediately after, I put all of my gaming stuff down to go and study. And I, it wasn't for about a year or and a half or so, when I checked back onto my YouTube channel, and then I realized, holy crap, these videos actually got a lot of views. And my subscriber count in a year and a half had gone from like 20 to 200 and... No, not 200. Like 150. And that's when I realized like, wait, if what I'd done back then worked, could I make it work again? And by that time, I discovered, you know, the Rad Brad, a market player when there was still, I think, like 100,000, 200,000 subscribers. Uh, all the, um, like, the old guard, of, almost the old guard of YouTube gaming, of like, um, like the, our current generation of YouTube gaming. And I took those influences in mind when I restarted my channel and that's how I've been dedicating all of my like most of my time outside of school outside of work outside of the army into making these videos and putting them on YouTube it's because I want I like playing games that's that's who I am I'm a gamer and I love to play games and if I can make videos of myself having fun playing these games and put them on YouTube and let other people have fun as well then I consider my goal to be achieved because you know that's 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 what, what I'm here for and if I can inf well not influence but like, if I can make other people happy watching my videos and doing what I do to make people happy, then that to me is like 100% success. I will continue doing that until the end of my days, until I stop YouTubing. And yeah, that's actually like really one of my motivations and creative goals for my channel. Uh, I've also got a lot of people asking me how, uh, like what am I looking forward to the most in 2017? Uh, Quebble Cop. Thank you so much, by the way, Quebble Cop. Only after I saw the verified logo next to your channel name, that I realized you had 6 million subscribers. Oh my God, notice me, senpai. Uh, because Couple Cup asking me what I'm looking forward to the most in 2017. Uh, what, um, uh, RJ Miles asks, what are your goals for 2017 as well? Uh, Wakeboard asks, what are your future plans for your channel? What, where do you want to be by this time next year? Future plans? Hmm, well, what am I looking forward to in 2017, huh? Uh, in terms of games, not much. Um, got Death Stranding coming up, which is really great. I plan to play that soon. Uh, 2017, I've started working already, so I've got a good stable income coming in. So I'm hoping in 2017, I hope to get a new computer uh, to replace this old clunker that I have and maybe to get maybe to move my recording set because if you can see in the video this is my living room this is my this is our place's living room like this there's a TV over there the kitchen's that way that way is my freaking room and all the other bedrooms and bathrooms are that all along that hallway so like what I really hope is that I can move this shit right here into back back down that hall into my room so that I can have a closed environment for my recording and, and then I don't have to bother anybody out here like my family, my grandparents with this shit that comes out of my mouth. <laughs> um, what else? Where do I want to be by this time next year? I want, I don't want to make impossible goals, but I really want to kind of be at a thousand subscribers by this time next year. That's kind, that to me seems really, really impossible, but I know that, honestly, I know that if I work hard enough at it, I will get it. Pause the AMA for just a second. So let me explain how I got into the situation in the first place. So what happened was, I was talking with one of the other moderators on the YouTubers Discord. You know who you are. Don't lie. I know where you live. He, I was talking to him about 
channel growth and how he has had steady growth over the past one or two months. And compared to me, who I got, I got close to 400 subscribers in September of this year. I got to 390. Five, and I've sat there for the past four months. I uploaded the a I uploaded this not not this. I uploaded the previous AMA video in October, and I'd hoped to get at least a handful of questions, you know, for the whole video. And it just sat there for three months and didn't get anything. And I was just by 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 December, I was just so frustrated, and I I just sort of didn't care anymore. I was probably I was probably thinking I'm probably gonna get 400 subs by like June next year or March by the earliest. I don't know. And then. I don't know, I guess he felt bad or something, and then he posted the video on Reddit. And that's where all of you have come from, I'm guessing. And just this, the, the AMA video just sort of exploded, and now I've spent, I have spent the last 40 minutes talking about, talking about questions that you have, you all have a asked me. He, when I questioned him on Discord, the very next day, uh, I, I, I didn't know what his motivations were, but then I sort of, I sort of backtracked his Reddit posts, and then I realized it was his way of wishing me a Merry Christmas by getting me all, by getting you all to come to my horrible tiny little channel and asking me all of these silly, mostly serious, but some very silly questions. And well, I don't know. I think it's the best Christmas gift I've had this year. I've had all year. I've had the past few years actually. And like it, the the, it's, I'm not saying that I'm an attention whore because no, I'm not. But to see the amount of growth I've had in the span of 24 hours and. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like on the verge of panicking. I, like, the whole of last night, I was just so nervous. Like, what am I gonna do? I've got like nearly 100 new viewers. I have to impress them somehow, right? By being this fat, freaking Asian idiot that makes videos on YouTube for like shits and giggles. But like, I, I, I spent the past three years building up another 200 subscribers. And to me, I, I find that to be a good enough goal. Actually, I mean, if I were still sitting at 150 subscribers after three years, then that would be really sad. But at the same time, I find that the growth, I have a bigger audience with which to share my content, to make people laugh, to make people smile, and to draw feedback from you guys, to improve myself and how I do my videos. And to me, I feel that like, that is like why I joined YouTube. That's the reason why I started this shit, is to make friends, to grow, and you know, to, 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 to develop this, this channel and this community to be a, p a place where people can smile and people can laugh, people can have fun without worrying about gimmicks or over the top enthusiasm or and stuff like that. I just, this is like, like no frills, no spills, just come here, relax and have fun just watching this idiot screw up in games a lot. And like, that's, that's, that's really like the whole, my whole, my whole channel thing, you know? The, the it's, it's what keeps me motivated. You guys keep me motivated. And that's like the main drive why I still have a YouTube channel and why even though I have such a low subscriber count Why I continue to make these videos is because I find it fun And if I find it fun and other people find it fun, then I'm just gonna keep doing what works It's fun to play these games on camera It's fun for me to play games I've never played before and to be blown away by things that I've never seen that I've never heard of before and like it's just this this whole YouTube gaming thing is if I didn't have it I'd probably be going insane right now and it's like that's that's it's, it's it's almost like a lifeline for me really i met a lot of people really good good friends people that i appreciate being around and to me if i hadn't met these people i probably wouldn't be this jovial or this cheerful or this i don't know how to put it autistic whatever i don't know um but if i hadn't met these this bunch of people that I play games with. If you've been a long-term um, fan of my channel, you've been a long-term subscriber. You've you've seen White, you've seen Antoine, you've seen Slender Dan, you've seen Lost and Exit, uh, and then you've seen a whole bunch of people come and go in my channel. But like these five people, if I hadn't met them, I don't think I'd be this happy. You know, it's this 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 whole gaming thing, just making friends. These are people who, who do YouTube just like I do. Uh, but they all have their own commitments now. White uh, White he streams now. Antoine's got school. Uh, Lost and Exit are both doing their own thing, and and Dan's also got school. But if I hadn't met these people, I don't think I would have become the person I am today. They I started doing this whole YouTube thing in the dark corner of my life. And if I hadn't met these wonderful, wonderful people, if I hadn't met and played with them and had the memories I had playing games with them, I don't think my life would have turned out the way it is right now. Like, that's that's my YouTube story. I mean, I don't have to write like a, I don't have to do a draw my life sort of deal. That shit's overrated anyway. That, that, that's like the story of my YouTube life. That's the story of me.
That's how I came to be a YouTuber, a small YouTuber who enjoys entertaining a small crowd. And if that small crowd turns out to grow bigger and bigger each, each, pass, each passing year, then so be it. I just have to improve myself to entertain more people and, you know, get to know more, get to know more of you better. That's what I want, honestly. Right, enough of that sappy stuff. Right, let's move on to the last bit of this AMA. I've almost spent, I spent almost an hour on this and it's time to get to the random questions. So, first of all, real life. Abdul Nusra asks, what do you do when you're not playing video games? Are you a student? Do you work? Uh, yeah, and also Nightmare Can Fly also asked what you'd like to do outside of YouTube. Uh, I said earlier that I'm working and I and I do work. I work as a nurse. Surprising, yes. I work as a nurse in a local hospital. I spent the last three years of my life studying, getting a diploma in nursing. If you're Singaporean, I spent three years studying in Nanyang Poly taking that diploma in nursing course. If you are a young Singaporean viewer and you're watching this video, and if you have a head for healthcare, go study in Nanyang, seriously. The alumni there is so great. But outside of YouTube, uh, yes, I do work as a nurse. Uh, I do a fair bit of drawing. I travel quite a bit to visit my other friends. Uh, speaking of friends, yeah, that's actually someone I'd want to shout out to even though he doesn't have YouTube and that's my friend, best friend of close to 10 years now. His name is Mike and he's been my gaming buddy ever since I started playing Team Fortress 2 in 2008 and he's been there by my side with his other friend, uh, Chan, ever since for like the past eight to nine years and we've played all of the games together and it's like he, he he was the guy that like started me down this happy road of gaming and then honestly if honestly if i hadn't met him i would met him and everyone else that i just mentioned i would be so depressed but yeah i i outside of youtube i work as a nurse i do a bit i do a fair bit of drawing i'm fat oh and also because i'm singaporean uh ghostly vg who asked me location question mark question mark question mark yes i'm singaporean do i look american to you but yes i am singaporean so which means after i finish my diploma i spent about two years doing national service and for those of you who are american uh national service is basically our country's idea of mandatory enlistment so what happens is every guy at the age of 18 and above they have to go for a a health screening by the government and they are given like um what's called a pest status which is basically it's like a is, is a physical fitness level and that determines where you will go once you enlist after you finish your studies and so when you enlist you start off as like a recruit and then you spend about two to four months in basic and then after that you get sent off to another camp elsewhere in singapore to do vocation training which is where uh you get you pick up your vocation like um i was a combat medic when i was in the army i trained for three months in a combat medic course I lifted my fair share of stretchers poked my poked my fair share of arms and lifted my fair share of people and after that I got and then after you get your vocation you get posted to a unit and that's where you spend the rest of your army life uh, depending on the unit you might get a relaxed army life you might not but that's how the military system works here in Singapore you spend the, uh, the minimum amount of time you spend is two years minimum so you have to spend two years minimum in the army if you don't holy shit it's getting dark well if you don't well first of all the government hunts for you like you're a convict and then they throw you in jail and then you serve anyway so good luck <laughs> come Singapore or be a permanent resident go to the army if you don't you go to jail then you go anyway wonderful i'm gonna go turn on the light because it's getting friggin dark and as you can see outside i uh, thing nope never mind picking webcam not picking up dark clouds messing in the sky yeah, that, 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 that's that's what I do inside of YouTube. I am a nurse, I draw a fair bit, I go out with my friends a lot, and I don't know, I eat and get fat. Like, you know, like chubby. And yeah, next question, Braxbox asks. Also, Brax, by the way, I'm so sorry for not finishing Final Fantasy IX. I will get to it, I swear, I promise you. Uh, Braxbox asks, who's your favorite music artist? If, or is that too specific? Maybe what is your favorite genre? And of course, other person who asked me music, Ryan H, what kind of music are you into? Uh, the, my music tastes have changed over the past few years, just like my taste in gaming. When I was in my teens, I used to love a lot of emo music. So like, like your stereotypical like Linkin Park, My Chemical Romance, Eminem, all of that shit. And then as I grew, and as I started growing up, I was introduced to the world of electronic music. So for a while, I was like this, I loved house music, I loved rave music. And then a friend of mine in Finland introduced me to this wonderful, wonderful genre of music called Electro Swing and a band called Caravan Palace. And that's where I've ha been happily sitting for the past three or so years. Happily listening to Electro Swing, Caravan Palace, um, people like, yeah, like people like Caravan Palace, Power of Stellar. Uh, uh, swing growers, like this whole subgenre of 
electronica music that's like it's it's what I love which is 1920s era jazz so people like Sinatra, Bing Crosby, Dean Martin all of the all of like all of the Rat Pack and like all of that old music combined with modern electronic music which is like like people like I like Daft Punk I like C2C uh, and like that to me was like that electro electro swing is like my favorite genre bar none the the only other genre that comes close to it is like my love for swing and jazz music and like really that's it if I had to pin if I and like if I had to pin down a specific favorite artist it would be Caravan Palace because they are like the best electro swing band bar none <laughs> Codename Gamma asks got a favorite Christmas or holiday movie that would be Tom uh Tom Clancy's Ripper Six Siege no um Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas I watched that movie when I was a kid and I loved it to death. I still do. Insane Monday asks, best food to use as a bribe? Steak, medium rare with a baked potato on the side. Best food in the world. Steak is amazing and no one can convince me otherwise. Olge de Novo, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Ask me, what's your favorite kind of pizza? Does it have pineapple in it? Why not? Well, my favorite kind of pizza is pepperoni, actually. I don't understand why pineapple has to be in pizza. I understand why pineapple is nice. I kind of like pineapple in other places, just not on pizza, that's all. Pleb Central asks, what's your favorite animal? A lot of dogs, actually, but it's a shame because I can't keep pets by law in Singapore because what happens, oh my god, it's raining. What happened is that Singapore government has, uh, the Singapore, uh, our housing and development board we call it hdb is the people that organize the construction of apartments like this uh they have a law that states that you can only keep pets that are a certain size and that size is probably like 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 where's my camera like like this where's my other hand ah! Or is it like 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 this ish or so small in an apartment like this i would keep a dog or a cat but i can't by law so <laughs> balls to that i guess but my favorite animals are dogs Basically, I like, I, lo I love dogs, all sorts of dogs. If I had a chance to keep a dog, I'd either be a corgi, who I, I have heard are bundles of joy, or I would say Samoyeds, but then they've got like way too much fur. No, they're cute, but I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have the time to <laughs> take care of them by myself. Uh, Rails to Revolution. Thank you for the comment, by the way. I don't have a, you don't have a particularly interesting question, but you do have a question, which is what's your favorite Christmas food? And for me, my favorite Christmas food is turkey. For the past few years, I used to go to my cousin's place for turkey, but now they've stopped um, inviting us over for Christmas. I don't know why but i used to love having you know turkey roast uh, lamb shank with mint love it just amazing food it's why i'm so fat <laughs> and not like it's why, it's why i'm so fat and not thinner valiant 544 asks oh, what's your favorite go juice red bull mother vitamin water or adderall adderall is a drug red bull makes me sick i don't know what mother is uh i don't drink vitamin water i just drink plain water really so like you know, think stuff like this. It's, it's what keeps you going. It's like when we were training the army, we always drank water every day. And that's, you know, that's like the best part of any day. It's just rehydrating yourself every day. Did I just drink? We're just gonna pretend that didn't happen, okay? Anyway, actually, that's all of the questions I... That's all of the questions. That's all of them. I have finished this ask me anything so thank you I, I i don't know what to say when i when i saw this video get all of the interest it has and now i'm like oh my god what am i gonna do for 500 subscribers <sighs> so like i don't know man if you guys love what i do and if you have stuff that you know you want to comment on to improve uh, to help me improve tips um like how, how to use this software that i have proper like well and stuff like that you know feel free you know, just contact me pm me on youtube twit uh, throw tweets at my face or something i don't know but like or even comment on my videos that's fine tell me what i can do to improve i've got a lot of stuff i know i still need to improve after three years but thank you all so much for for commenting for liking the video for i don't know sharing it for friends and thank you so much couple cup for noticing me and I, thank you. yeah I, I i don't know what to say i'm just sort of like i'm lost for words i don't i I don't know what to say other than thank you. It's it, it means a lot that you guys took your time to come and ask me silly questions, well, some silly, some not so silly, on as like a silly way to wish this idiot a Merry Christmas. So hopefully for you guys in America, this will come out on Christmas Day itself, I hope. And, but for you guys, for the rest of you in Asia, if I have any Asian viewers, it's gonna come out tomorrow, I think, because today is Christmas, so, uh, well, Merry Christmas, guys. Next holiday we're looking forward to, Happy New Year. Have a good one, fellas. This is DJ, signing off.